Starting the public forum, will Mr. Tom Yates, you, you will start us off, and the connection fees, the finance director will be here shortly to answer that question. The connection fees oh. issue. When All the right. finance director is here, she will answer that question directly. Okay, Thomas Yates, 30 Avery Street. A uh, couple of things. We don't need a public safety director in this town. $48,000, that money is allocated under the police budget. And there's $78,000 under the railroad budget that's at the mayor's discretion. Is that picking up the rest of the gentleman Cirelli's, uh, Larry Ciccarelli's uh, pay? That's something we should look into. And that we, we don't need a public safety director in this town. We have a police chief, a fire chief, EMS director. That's enough, okay? Now, uh, as far as take-home vehicles. I did the math. You got 28 people taking home vehicles. They all make over 100000 a year. It's costing the town. Hey, excuse me. Can I have quiet in here? Thank you. Okay. Sorry, the, Mr. Yates. Okay. It's costing the town $10,000 a month in leases for these vehicles. You know? So if they're making over $100,000, the taxpayers should not be carrying, paying for their behinds, come back and forth to work for the town. And as far as WPCA, and the connection fees, that money, go, uh, I've been asking for years about that. And there's over a million dollars in money that should be going directly to the WPCA, not to the town. That's the uh, WPCA's money for tying into the sewage system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yates. <laughs> Next speaker is Mary Ellen Brindell, please. Are the rest of the council members going to be here? I'm not sure. All right. Okay, I have a handout to pass out. If you could just leave it, if you could just leave it at the desk of the seats of the other people. Okay. So yeah. there's um, this one first top page, and then the page underneath. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, my name is Mary Ellen Brindell. I live at 25 Barrows Terrace in Stratford. It's my understanding that the negotiations were halted on the Stratford stage group. And um, f following this all along, it seems to me that there has been sight lost in the negotiations over the, whether there's going to be the in or not, about the inclusion of the White House or not, and forgetting who is actually going to be running the show if this contract had been approved or, were, or possibly could be approved in the future. Besides David Reed, there are two eminent men involved in here, which I don't think that people on the council have appreciated that fact. And maybe the new people aren't even aware of these two people. I'm passing out a one page uh, synopsis of George White, George C. White, who organized the Eugene O'Neill Theater, and Michael Kahn, who is the eminent director of the, Art of the Shakespeare Theater in Washington, D.C., who will be bringing his productions up here. Now, I'm here to remind you of the eminence of these people, of, of their combined experience in the world of theater, of directing, and never, never before has any proposal ever had such eminent people in their ranks as George C. White and Michael Kahn. And it's beyond my understanding how a town can re cannot consider these people in running it. No other proposal matches these two people, none. All right, so I'm going to briefly read a summary of George White. And unfortunately, Michael Kahn is involved in Washington, D.C., and George White would eventually like to make an appearance here. But this one page that I passed out to the members, let me briefly read some of this. Okay, George White is the founder and the, for 37 years, chairman of the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center in Waterford, Connecticut, and has been active in theater through, throughout the world, not just Little Stratford. Beginning in 1972, he has spearheaded cultural exchange efforts in Australia, China, Russia, and Brazil. In 1984 and 1987, respectively, he directed Eugene O'Neill's 
Anna Christie, and Meredith Wilson's The Music Man in Beijing. His work has been recognized with the Royal Swedish Order of the Polar Star and by the French Re President of the French Republic. In the United States, George White has directed plays. Thank you very much, Ms. Brindell. Mr. Goodrich is our next speaker. I'm not finished. My time is uh, yeah, up. No, your time is up. Thank you. Well, please read what I said about Michael Kahn. Okay, thank, thank you. you. As a reminder, each speaker has three minutes. Hello, Edward Goodrich, 2320 Elm Street. Uh, thank you, Council, uh, for serving the town and coming here. Difficult time. You're going to have a big night tonight. You have to do the budget. You have to do quite a few things. It's not going to be easy, but we really appreciate everybody coming in here and handling out our town uh, to some of the, ferret out some of the problems of the town. One thing I will say is that I think you made the right decision on Shakespeare. The council made the council made the right decision. I've been involved in many. I've been involved a, a, a long time here, and a lot of this is in the plan. And if you don't, if you have a faulty plan, then you then it will not work. And that and 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 I believe that this is how this council saw this, and and I, I very much appreciate uh, really the good work that you've done. You don't hold the grudge. I think you looked at it in a business like. Um, and a lot, there's a lot of unknown things that, you know, that has happened. I think, um, I think one of the things that we should have, we have to do is, is, is you know, that has come up to as far as, uh, as far as Shakespeare is, is to see where, you know, the beer money is. Because I know the beer, the, I talked to the beer people and they, and they're, they're, you know, they're looking to see what happened and, and to get their beer money back. Now, this is pretty interesting because we have to really, this was, this was a charitable donation. So you have to see, you know, what, where this was put. I think that's, I think that's very prevalent because, um, you know, and you have to start it on a good foot and to see what type of account was it a not-for-profit account or what account really that this beer money was was put at because I know that I talked to them and they they were asking me about it. Um, I uh, I was involved with a lot of festivals down there. Um, I know there's there's a lot of success with the uh, with the Stratford uh, with the Stratford Shakespeare Academy with the Roonies. They have to meet their budget. Um, I had to meet my budgets. I had to account for every penny. Penny, in fact, in fact, I got audited um, uh, by someone on the Ar uh, Arts Commission, and I had all sorts of things that they were looking at for me as far as uh, you know. There, there was a police investigation about all the stuff that we did. All these volunteers did all these great things. And, uh, and then you have, you, you have this type of thing, and people wonder why the town's divided. Um, at, I had FOI requests, so I had to answer to, 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 to quite a few things. And the Roonies, and the, and, and the beer people are accountable. The Sheikh's beer people. They raise money, they have, to, they have to file for things. So, you know, I just think it's very important to find out, you know, you know to, to get to the bottom. You know, they've asked for their money back to see exactly where this beer money is. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Mr. Goodrich. Ms. Phillips? Stephanie Phillips? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman, and everyone tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. I'll try to make it as brief as possible. There are two areas that the town has been discussing that has come to sort of a, a head. That is keeping our taxes as low as possible. I agree with a lot of folks who would like to see it go to zero. I certainly applaud Mr. Dumas's effort to try to get it there, as well as those people who would like to see our education improve and improve and increase the funding to the BOE as Mr. Llewellyn and many people here have championed. But it, being that said, both those two are diametric, diametrically opposed. It is hard at this point to do both to the full extent. If you take it in context, Hartford is losing jobs, other towns around us are losing jobs as everybody is trying to cut back and Stratford needs to do its fair part. Our challenge is to do that and balance that without losing services, trying to get the best education, but recognizing that we have residents who cannot afford the tax increase that is proposed by the mayor. 
I've been working with each of you and I'm here to help. I've offered some plans and I'm willing to be upfront to say that there is a plan that we can put five and a half million to the Board of Ed. I'd like to do more, but I need to recognize, and I'm sure you all do, and the public needs to recognize, that Hartford is going to be possibly cutting us $600,000. Now that's small and pale in comparison to our neighbor. And I have to compliment Mr. Gresco and all of our state legislators who are working very hard to keep that very small. But it is a reality. We will not get all the funding that we want from Hartford. And in being that said, we cannot solve all of our problems in one year. I'd like to see more money go to the Board of Ed. I spent six years on the board, on the council, advocating for funds. And for six years, we have underfunded the Board of Ed. But we cannot fix six years of damage in one year. We need to do it in phase, whether it's two years or such. I'm proposing five and a half million, which is a five and a half increase. If we get more money from the state, certainly that can go to the Board of Ed. But that gets them much further than where they've ever gotten before, where my council has only given them one or two percent. At the same time, I'm advocating and put a plan together to cut $1.6 million by trimming, and I mean trimming, the fat out of various different departments. Every department is giving up something. It's something that I would have loved to see the mayor provide to you. Given that he hasn't, some of us have taken the time to try to help. 1.6 million allows us to get that tax down. The plan that I'm proposing to you is 1%, Thank which is $190, much, and Fidu that is less is than next. 1%. Thank you. Andrea Veyu, 441 Washington Parkway. I want to thank you, Madam Chairman and Honorable Councilman, for serving and for being accessible, especially over the weekend. I know it was Mother's Day, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here tonight. We've had several exchanges, and I wanted to thank you for your time. Keep up your momentum and move forward. Be transparent and do what's right. That's what got you all elected here. You inherited this budget, and it can't be fixed overnight. The BOE has been shortchanged over $20 million over the years, and it can't be fixed or made up in one year. The grand list is growing, great, but when do we see that in our taxes? The Board of Ed has asked for 8%. I think it's political, and it's too much too fast. Next year's election, I've heard already a request for 0%. That's unacceptable. I saw in the Connecticut Post yesterday that there was an article where Milford, Shelton, and the Board of, in Bridgeport had um, lower hired numbers of employees. Stratford noticed wasn't listed. The Board of Ed needs to be transparent and show its savings of retirees. The CREC audit showed many ways to save in special ed, and we're not implementing those suggestions. Um, um, we need to have a three to five year plan. Next year, we'll show this year's data where there was nothing implemented from this budget that you're looking to pass. We need a plan to succeed, and we need a metric to show that uh, success. We need accountability. We used to have a school improvement plan. We used to have a district improvement plan. Um, and the Board of Ed is not following protocol. The CIP I see is listed here, but I don't believe the Board has approved it. Um, the administration needs to manage and be held accountable. Um, Joe, I want to say thank you to you, because I know you do work very hard for Stratford, and as the legislators have as well. But I would like to ask you, and I'm going to give you some information to review and to share with the other legislators to go back because it's your responsibility to go back and see if these funded and unfunded mandates are working. Because if they're not, we can get rid of them and save the taxpayers money. Um, on, the, on the modular classrooms, I disagree as a taxpayer. I think there's classrooms that we can utilize and I have the information here to look at as well. Even if the 8% isn't fully funded, I want to thank all of you because I have heard it will be an increase. When I was on the board, I was um, the recipient, we received 0 0.6, 0 0.1, or 1.6, 2, and 2. So anything that you give the board, I thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Henry Bruce is next, please. Hen Henry Bruce. Henry Bruce, 37 Jefferson Street. Well, I, I know it was a happy Mother's Day for the mothers in the room, but it wasn't a happy Mother's Day when I got this proposed budget that you're going to be talking about tonight. 
and uh, I've read it, and it's in basically, if you look at it, and, this, and if this council votes on this budget as, as it's been worked out on Friday, it'll represent the largest tax increase in the seven years of the Harkins administration. And given the economic realities of this town, I find this prospect quite unacceptable. Last year was a watershed year for the citizenry as the WPCA referendum saw over 7,600 people vote to stop the sale of the water treatment plant and then vote each of you into office with the expectation of fiscal responsibility. How does this proposed budget that will increase property taxes by 5% represent a responsible action? Where is the sacrifice? I've lobbied hard for a zero tax increase for this year and also to give the Board of Education as much as we can afford and they deserve. But that means the municipal side of the ledger needs major surgery to bring the spending in line with what we can afford and what we truly need. A number of you have spoken out on behalf of the taxpayer and the financial hardship this proposed budget will be to homeowners and I applaud you. Unfortunately, many of you have said not much at all, and the compromise from Friday demonstrates to me and many others that the mayor's budget represents simply punishment for the WPCA decision, and the council is leaning towards rubber stamping what the mayor wants. Hundreds of volunteers stuck their neck out last year by, for something they believed in to fight the mayor's attempt to sell the WPCA. We spent over $25,000 of our own money to defend our right to the referendum vote. It is now left to each of you to decide what your report card will say after your first, town, your first term as councilman. I urge each of you to think hard on what your decision will be this week and how you want to be remembered for your actions on this budget. The whole town is watching. Thank you very much, Mr. Bruce. Mark Sheff. <laughs> Mark Sheck, 161 Birdseye. I'm not eloquent at all. But if you guys pass this budget, everything that we fought against for the WPCA is gone. And it's awful that you're saying, let's compromise, let's do everything we can to say it's okay. The town has, what, 28 cars? That's ridiculous. The mayor's office, how many people are in the mayor's office that could be cut? I can't run my household this way. I can't run my household this way. And you know what? Can I go to my tenants? I'm a landlord. I'm also vice president of the Greater Bridgeport Property Owners Association. Can I go to my tenants and say, I'm raising your rent because the, the, the council don't know, doesn't know how to make cuts? It's ridiculous. You're all adults. You know what? Things need to be done. Yes, they're hard. Do them. Okay, hey, thank you very much, Mr. Chef. Diane Elias. And I want my campaign money back. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet and um, try to be eloquent by quoting, quoting someone else. Um, do what you feel in your heart to be right, for you'll be criticized anyway. You'll be damned if you do and damned if you don't. That's from Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Elias. Linda Palermo, please. Linda Palermo. Oh, there you are. Okay. Good evening, Linda Palermo. I do not support the budget that they're proposing for the town of Stratford. There are many homes that are being foreclosed on because people cannot pay their mortgages. I was in court today, and there are two people that have homes down in the Lordship area, and they're fighting to keep the property because the previous town attorney slapped a large fee on there for them removing the property, their personal property, and putting it elsewhere. That's wrong. Let them take it from his furniture and let them put it away or sell it so they could help the people down there pay their bill. I live in Stony Brook. They have 31 cases on the judicial website, and it says foreclosure at the top. How many will actually go to foreclosure? I do not know. I've been victimized. However, they can't get me on that because I went to the state's attorney's office, and I says, we got a problem. I'm paying caring charges, and they're trying to levy late fees, rollover late fees, which is against the law. 
I have to go back to the state's attorney's office, and I'm going to do what I can insofar as trying to save some of the people at Stony Brook, especially me, don't lie that I owe you money if I don't. So we got to do something with this budget. And one thing this town does not need is a mini budget. And if you do that, I do know that those people, many of them that were involved with the referendum, will look to do recall on you people that sit here. So please, take it into consideration. Think of the taxpayers. Think of us that really, and many of us are on fixed incomes. Please do not approve what he wants approved. And we should, as I said previously, find a way, and not by way of recall, because we cannot recall the mayor, but we have to do something so that we could eliminate the position if he isn't serving the taxpayers of the town of Stratford in good faith. He hired two people to do Blythe. One is the Blythe King, Mr. Fredette. He got cited so many times for Blythe, and so now he's in that position. And he's getting paid pretty decently. A combination between the two of them, I think, is, comes to over $400 a week. So please take the taxpayers into consideration. I really don't want to start walking around and getting signatures, but pray tell. If I must, I will. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ms. Palermo. I'm not sure if this says Dan Meredith or Don Meredith, and I apologize. David Meredith. David Meredith. Sorry. I'm not up here to point fingers at anybody or anything like that. I'm just here to say I can't go in my pocket any deeper, get any more money out to give you. I, you know, I pay six thousand dollars a year in taxes just for property tax. That doesn't include my car and anything else that goes along with it. I mean, there's got to be a stop somewhere, and I really think it has to stop here. And you guys have to make the hard decision and stop it. I'm not criticizing anybody, but you just have to support the people and quit thinking about political parties. Help the people, not yourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Meredith. And Martirana? <laughs> Good evening. Ann Martirana, 285 Reeds Lane. Um, I'm here as a mom who's also a teacher in another town, and I care deeply about public education. Um, that my children will be receiving here in Stratford. We've been happy with our first graders' experiences so far, mostly due to the outstanding teachers we have been fortunate to have. Um, but with two more children coming up behind him and what I know to be Stratford's reputation when it comes to education, I feel I need to be here after a long day working and being mom with a long night ahead of me with a baby that does not sleep. In regards to the mayor's proposed increase to the Board of Edge um, budget, I was really excited. Finally, a budget, funded, a fully funded budget, what we've been advocating for for the last few years. When I heard it would be another $300 in taxes a year, I thought, a small price to pay, the superintendent's going to turn our schools around. And then I began hearing that it is possible to have a fully funded school budget without raising taxes, and I saw Mark Dumas' proposed budget cuts um, and I thought, ah, oh, it's a no-brainer. Could it get any better? The cut seemed easily produced, or maybe he was just willing to sit down and do the work. I have not heard reasons why his cuts won't work. And what I'm starting to see is that even after all the hard work of many of you, some of you, last year, um, there are still friends and family deals at town hall who's known who since childhood, who's related to who, et cetera. Um, you can't think that way. You have to think of the majority here and what the people uh, you represent want and need. I don't want to see a neighbor have their hours cut or lose their job, but the bottom line is that there are way more taxpayers and students to think about than residents working in the town and that many of those residents um, or many of those town employees don't even live in our town. I'm sure we all agree that you're not elected to protect friends, family, your own interests, um, but the interests of those that you're representing. I am upset to hear over the weekend about a proposed 
arts position for $40,000. Um, I'm wondering if that's true. The Board of Ed has been criticized and questioned over their budget and, and accused of not spending responsibly. Um, the Board of Ed needs to cut from the top. There's so much waste at central office, but where are your cuts from town hall? No one believes that there is no waste at town hall. Board of Ed has been videotaping their meetings and posting them for residents. They have a link on their website that defines the roles of their administrators like to see that from Town Hall also. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next person. Can she move the bucket, Ms. Manis? Could you just move that bucket down? I have trouble. I'm a little short seeing people. Thanks. Um, uh, Next person is Chris Rooney. Could be on a site. Could be on a site. <laughs> Um, good evening, Chris Rooney, 320 Shore Road um, in Stratford. I'm here on behalf of the Mighty Quinn Foundation. Um, we've asked tonight for you to consider an extension of our current license for five years. I just wanted to briefly tell you what we'll be doing with that. Um, first of all, we'll, we, will, we just this week fixed our class for the coming year. We'll once again be having people coming from as far away as England and as close as just a couple miles away. Um, we'll have teachers, some of whom are here tonight, and. Uh, <laughs> some of whom will be coming from very prestigious uh, places far away to enjoy Stratford. Starting in mid-June, in the spotlight, we'll be moving over to the White House and we'll be running that program. That's an opportunity for 50 junior and senior high school kids to, to enjoy putting on a musical as they have for the last 25 years in the town. The town's done a great job of sponsoring that and we're taking it over. We have a play, new play program that's coming in. Our um, reviewer has a hundred plays people have proposed to read on site. We'll pick four. Don't worry, we won't have a hundred plays. Um, so this is a great opportunity. We thank you for considering us for that, and um, we look forward to the opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Rooney. Next person is Barbara Heimlich, please. Barbara Heimlich, 91 College Street. On Sunday, the Connecticut Post had ran an article on the front page called Scant Rise in Public Hiring with a subtitle of Most Area Cities and Towns Doing More with Less Since Recession. Were you astonished that Stratford wasn't listed? I wasn't. It's just another sign of how out of step this town is with other municipalities. But let's look at our neighboring town, Milford, who was listed, and whose roster of full-time employees went from 561 to 539. Milford's population is 53,137. Their present mill rate is 28.7. Their total city and BOE proposed budget for 2016-2017 is $204,941,392 with a proposed mill rate of 27.83. For the mathematically challenged, that's a decrease of 0.87 mills. Now let's look at Stratford. We have a population of 52,112. Our present mill rate is 36.98. Our proposed budget for 2016 2017 is 216,051,861. Our proposed mill rate is 38.84, an increase of 1.86 mills. This proposed budget is unconscionable. Stratford has the highest number of seniors in the state. How do you expect them to absorb this cost when, according to AARP, their social security cost of living adjustment this year will be zero? and last year was less than 2%. Unlike many of our town employees, most residents in this town have not had a raise in years. Last Monday during the budget hearing when the question was posed to the attendees, only two out of more than 100 people attending the hearing raised their hands when questions about a raise. Any increase to our town is going to be a burden. To add to our misery, the state of Connecticut has cut aid to education for our town by $983,242. Yeah. 
another strong reason to stand up for your residents and make cuts to offset this setback. Despite the dismal fact that our housing assessment has plummeted, my home assessment alone dropped by more than $8,000, the higher mill rate will still be a board burden. How do we cut back? Less dining out, putting off improvements to our home? Who does that hurt in the long run? Our Stratford businesses. Here are a few suggestions that I believe will be necessary if we are anticipating fully funding the Board of Education. Roll back all salary increases except those mandated by union contracts. Thank you very much, Ms. Heimler. <laughs> Gerald Gray? Gerald Gray? I know I saw her earlier. No? I don't see her. I'm sorry? Okay, if she comes back, we'll let her go. Walter Vimkunis, please. Oh, Gerald. Okay. Hi, all. I am Gerald Gray. I, uh, some of you may remember me. Uh, my mom and I, Dolores Gray, back in 1971, co-created Nature's Way Health Foods here in Stratford over on the corner of Barnum and Main. Over the next four decades of our 60 to 80 hour seven day work weeks, we grew that tiny little startup nature's way into a huge multi-million dollar enterprise. Solely through our having such deep respect and appreciation that we held towards our wonderful customers here in Stratford. We were always aware that Stratford was not particularly business friendly and towards its small business owners, but being Milford residents with a Stratford shorefront summer beach cottage as our Stratford residents, we did not become aware of the dark, dark underbelly of the town of Stratford until this past decade. In spring 2009, my fully mentally capable and competent mother confronted her attorneys with the, her knowledge of their huge malfeasance in looting and stealing much of the body of assets as had been co-created by mom and me through nature's way. Upon this confrontation, attorney Engelman conf confirmed to my mother that yes, it was true that he and my brother Jay had full power over my mother and her assets and that he was going to put her into a facility as per his being able to declare her to be incompetent, which she was not. My mother and I staggered out of this office in shock. We turned to Stratford senior center director at the time, Carrie McNanima, whom my mother well knew from years of having been a Nature's Way contributor to the Senior Center. Mc McNanima told us to go to Stratford Town Attorney Kevin Kelly for help. We did. It was the biggest, most horrific mistake we could have made. Kevin Kelly, for no good reason, put my mother into the probate, elder care probate racket of his close crony, King Kermay, probate judge of Stratford. King Kelly, King Cremay and Kelly, without my mother's and my knowledge, consent, or participation, put my mother into conservatorship under a stranger named Katrina Camera, whom we would tragically learn is the main operative that Stratford and other municipalities, including their senior centers, the local DSS, Protective Services for the Elderly, and the probate judge and municipalities are using here in Southwest Connecticut to seize and steal person's assets. A corresponding racket is taking place here in Stratford under the racket of municipality fabricated blight liens that are taking people's homes from them in foreclosure court as the hundreds of thousands of dollars of blight liens are tallied up and then put into foreclosure court upon the homeowners. I experience this every Monday in foreclosure court in Bridgeport as I watch friends here from Stratford go and get demolished there. I'm sorry, Ms. Gray, the time is up. Okay, I would like to have finished, but. Could, okay, she, he, he, gave you, him, she get, he gave you some of his time. Oh, thank you. One minute. Then we have the FEMA and insurance fraud that has been taking place under our home destroyed, hurricane destroyed beach cottages and properties and the heavy, heavy implications and involvement on these properties with the local Owens, Sultan, Scott Corner, Rose Tizo, and Bellis parties, along with the municipalities 
of um, municipal parties and Stratford attorneys. And we have Kevin Kelly and the town attorneys, Bishop Jackson Kelly, Bertram Dezel Moses, every week over there in that Bridgeport court, foreclosure court, taking people's properties on these blight liens. <sighs> I have so horrifically come to learn that this town that we so happily, happily participated in for decades has such a stench of corruption, which so pervades, and it is so deep and pervasive. My mother today has been stripped of all her civil rights, has been stripped of a reportedly $33 million body of assets, and the assets have been liquidated for the purpose of probate court involuntary redistribution of assets, IRA, into these predators' pockets as payment of their fees for doing this to us. Thank you for your attention on this. Thank you very much, Ms. Gray. Um, Tina, can you grab the next sheet? Is there another sheet? Hey, Stephen Regustus. Hello, I'm Stephen Regustus. I reside at 94 Noble Street in Stratford. So this is my first time addressing this new council, and it's nice to see 10 faces that belong to people I know and consider friends. I hope that what I have to say tonight won't change that. Every one of you brings tremendous skills to the table, and you've all shown your willingness to put in the hard work needed to get Stratford back on track. So why does it seem that a majority of you are ready to rubber stamp Mayor Harkin's horrible budget proposal? I appreciate that you have made... I appreciate that you have made some cuts to his initial budget, but it's nowhere near enough. An average tax increase of nearly $300, $320 a year to every property owner in town is unacceptable. It saddens me to see the ten of you, ten people who I have the utmost respect for, fighting and forming cliques among yourselves. You have to work together, listen to each other, and try to come up with the best possible solutions for the people of Stratford. You can't reject suggested cuts simply because they come from people you don't personally like or you oppose politically. Mayor Harkins continues to try and grow the size of Stratford's government without adding any value. It is up to the, to the ten of you to stand up to him and say no. I hope that you all realize that many of you are sitting up there tonight because of an overwhelming majority who stood up to the mayor last November and voted no. Please don't forget, you weren't elected to represent the people who work in this building. You weren't elected to represent your political party, and you weren't elected to preserve the status quo. The 10 of you represent the 50,000 people of Stratford, and you need to do everything you can to avoid raising taxes on people who can't afford to pay any more. Find the cuts. Don't add any new positions this year. Show us that things have really changed in Stratford. The Board of Ed is a tricky dilemma. I went to the budget hearing last Tuesday at Stratford High and I was moved by the enthusiasm of the speakers wanting to save teachers' jobs and avoid cuts in the classrooms. I have seven grandnieces and grandnephews in the P Stratford public school system right now. Nothing is more important to me than seeing that those kids get every educational opportunity they deserve. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't discuss the cost of the BOE administration. We have a superintendent and a CFO who are quick to demand raises for themselves. But when they're told to cut their budget, they immediately say, we'll have to get rid of teachers. If these administrators really believe their raises are more important for the education of the children of Stratford than teachers are. 
if they think East Broadway is more important than the classrooms, maybe we have the wrong people running things. We need a board of education that will never propose laying off a single teacher without exhausting every other possible way of saving money. And we need a town council that will never raise taxes by even one dollar without exhausting every possible cut there is. I continue to hope that you are that town council. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tom Yem. Mr. Tom Yem. No xylophone. Name is Tom Yem, 746 Broad Street. Welcome to everyone here tonight. Welcome to council. Uh, I'm in a very good mood. My 13-month-old son, Morgan, is home kicking a soccer ball around. <laughs> so no matter what you do, I'm going to feel good. But I have a few comments. Um, first of all, last month, council was very brave. They stood up and they voted to break off negotiations for a theater contract with Stratford Stage Group and move on. In doing so, they stood up to the town attorney's office, and I think that crossed a Rubicon here. Never again w should this council live or act in fear of the town attorney. The town attorney is just a town attorney. He gives an opinion. He may be right. He may be wrong. We can go forward. Don't go backwards, please. One thing not everyone may know is that the group Elm Street Theater Company, uh, which was turned down a year ago, is still around doing wonderful things in Norwalk. So I hope you'll uh, take a second look at them. Uh, one last point on the theater. We heard from uh, the Mighty Quinn Foundation tonight. They are doing Stratford proud. They are going to be doing theater, Shakespeare, this summer. Let's help them continue for another five years. On the budget, mm -hmm. the mayor put out a 5% increase. Do not accept that, please. Don't even come close. The story in the Connecticut Post over the weekend was already referenced about towns up and down the river doing more with less. We can join them. Uh, this council needs to work together to hold taxes down. There are 10 of you. I might add that five of the council members here, I have a list here, but my printer is failing. So the color is poor. Five of the council members here were supported in one way or another by the organization of which I'm a director, which is For Stratford Network. So five of the people here uh, we're counting on to to work together as a group and with all the other council people to hold taxes down. We don't need a tax increase now, and we certainly don't need one now so that people next year can claim a zero budget, a zero tax increase is an improvement for an election year. Uh, councilman, my councilman. <laughs> My councilman, Mark Dumas, has drafted a zero tax increase budget. Consider it. It's possible. It's not easy. It's possible to do. Council can do that and send a message to the Board of Ed. We don't need more chiefs. We need more transparency. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that's it, unless there was another sheet that had disappeared that people had signed. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry? No, he's saying no. He had given his time. Yep. Thank you very much for coming to the public hearing. The council meeting starts at 8. Thank you. I did. I went and got the good stuff. Oh. The candy in this bag. Thanks for